so now we're back to the XCB Proto and as I said before this will be um, no this isn't one that I'm going to reinstall again is it no it was the previous one but we've got libxml installed so that's good so let's see now if I've downloaded this already No, I can't see that there. XCB Proto. No. So let's grab that. Extract it. Oh, XVF. Okay, the instructions for installing this is a single Python command. That's completed, and we can run some tests. That's all done. And finally, install it. Let's make install. And that's done. So I'll cross that one off as complete. And we move on to libxcb next. XCB. Let's have a look. See what this needs. It needs two libraries we've already done: lib xau and xcb proto, which we've just done. Recommended lib xdmcp, which we've already done, and optional is doxygen and lib xslt. Um, not sure what the lib xslt is for. Um, let's see if there's any switches here. No, there isn't. Um, let's have a look at the back. So again, I think this is a package that we will have to install for other packages. But looking at the dependencies, I might leave it for now. Yeah, it doesn't say why it actually needs it, but um, yeah, I'm going to leave it. i wait until I actually need libxslt, so I'll just download this package now. Um, I don't think there's any other configuration. Oops, what have I done there? Looks like C flags is being set explicitly here, so I'm not going to change what's in there. So this is lib xcb. Paste that in. Okay, it says it's actually used the C flags that have been set, so that's interesting. And it's added on one extra option. Don't worry. Uh, now we need to run make. Oops, that was just the yeah the configure. So let's build that.
that's finished. Uh, now I can run some tests with make check. Right, we've got a failure. Um, let's have a look at the tests. It could be the C flags because um, it didn't seem to take or use the ones that were um, specified on the config line. So it looks like test suite.log uh, that doesn't give us much all oh, right okay error while loading shared libraries libxau so it's something we've installed but I think what should fix this is if we load the cache again um, uh, if I can remember how to do this now Um, is it LD? Oh, I know what it is. It's LD config. That's it. Right now, hopefully that will do the job. So if I run the test again, yes, that's failed. So what's happened there is that. The library hadn't been loaded into the cache that glibc uses, I think it is. Um, so it couldn't find the library and that's why the failure occurred. So by running ldconfig it forces the cache to be regenerated. Um, it looks for all the libraries that are on the system because we've installed a few. They weren't in the cache, so that's what's fixed that. So we can... Oh, uh, we need to install it, don't we? libxcb. So go back here. So that was a test. Now they've passed. We've got the libraries loaded. Um, make install is what we need to run next. And that's installed. Remove that. Cross it off my list. And we'll move on to the next part. Which is XORG libraries. And I think it might be easier to look at the graphical browser here. Uh, so we've done ICU. We've done libxml2. Um, let's move on to... Xorg libraries. So it's got some dependencies. It needs well, we've got done. We've just done libxcb. It needs font config. I'm not sure if that's one we needed to reload anyway. Actually, I seem to remember. Oh no, that's free type, which is next to free config. Funnily enough, um, and elogind recommended. Um, so we'll load that. These look like they're to do with PDF or text documentation. With one or more of the following. So we could install these to get the documentations. One or more of the following. Well, FOP was something we're going to install in the future, but we've got links anyway. It does say one or more of the following, so um, that's fine. So let's look at XMLTO. That requires these here. 
optional for DVI PDF and Postscript. So again, like I said before, FOP I think is quite a involved package to build. Yeah, and it needs Apache and which needs Java. Um, so we can't do that at the moment. But if the documentation in PDF format is something you want, then that's something to rebuild maybe. Um, in fact, yeah, why not? Let's let's come back to rebuild um, XMLTO because of FOP. Um, we've got one of these for the optional backend processing of text, so that's fine. Let's look at LibXSLT. Although it's not a direct dependency, many applications using LibXSLT or expect docbook xml and docbook xsl so that's these two that we've also got to load load up so what i want to do is put these forward so docbook xsl needs libxml that's fine docbook xml needs SGML common, we've got that one, we've got that one by the looks of it, unzip, sure we've done that one, let's check on here, right now we haven't, yes we have, yeah it's there, so I'm sure we've installed that, but I'm going to check my list, yep it's crossed off, Um, I'm still wondering again if it's worth doing this now or maybe later. Uh, from config. Yes, yeah, to build additional. Yeah, I think I might leave the optional here at the moment and then rebuild the libraries at a later point because um, it's going to be a lot easier to do um, I'll just close down too many of these right, so load this again, we need font config and I'm going to definitely install the recommended um, yeah and I'll come back and do the XORG libraries when um, we can do FOP basically, I think. So I'll put an R next to that to reload when FOP installed. And if you recall, FOP needs um, ant and Ant needs Java, so basically it comes back around to Java and Java needs X11, the X11, so, or X Windows if you like, so that's kind of like a circular dependency. And I'll install these other ones as well if they haven't already been installed when I come to do that. But for now I'm going to do font config and elog in D to allow XORG to build. Um, let's check elog in D requires Dbus. Pam, we've got Polkit, it needs at runtime. Oh, okay, we do need to load up these doc books and XSLT now, anyway. So, once again, because XSLT needs to, I'll need these to, I'll shove them over here. LibXML, we've got optional use at runtime. So, beings are all used at runtime. Oh, that one's at runtime as well. These will just get picked up if they ever get built. So don't need to worry about that. Docbook XML, we've got unzip, we've got libxml2, we haven't got sgml common, so we'll load that one up. That has no dependencies. So optional. 
We haven't got Python 2 installed at the moment, so we'll only install that as and when we need it. Um, Libtree Crypt, not sure what that does. Crypto Library. Um, that's possibly something we want because it's to do with like the logging in of the windowing system. So let's see what this needs. It requires this package. Optional. Not sure what PTH does. Text Live will be to do with documentation. So I tend to want to ignore that, I think. LibGPR has no dependencies. PTH has a dependency on Fortran. So it needs GCC built with Fortran. Um, what does this do? Alright, let's have a look at the GCC for Fortran. Uh, right, that looks quite a complicated thing to do. I'm not sure if that's worth the effort, to be quite honest, so I'm going to ignore PCH. Um, it is optional, so I'll just stick with the libgpg error, uh, libxlt, polkit, what else does that need, it requires glib and js78, so this is getting quite big now, these dependencies, autoconfig, I see we've got rustc and which, which is handy to have, that's just a little tool, Rust C. Okay. Needs curl. CMake. LibSSH. Again, we're getting quite involved here again. Um, this is for Polkit required. JS required. Okay, so we can't get away with this. Uh, what needed Polkit? Oh, it's a runtime. Okay, so it looks like we would need to install this to get it going. Um, let's go back here. CMake needs libuv. Libarchive. NGHTTP. Uh, I'm not going to install any of these dependencies. Um, could install Qt. You do get a little tool with that, but I'm not going to. It's not not needed for what we need at the moment. That might be a rebuild, possibly. Um, although that would only be for development, as far as I know. LibUV has no dependencies. LibArchive has got a couple of dependencies. That hasn't got any. That hasn't got any that we need. That's got libxml we've already got. Um, libssh2. All three requires for the test suite. So GNU PG, libtree crypt we are going to be installing. And openssh. So this is getting quite sticky now. Uh, yeah, it's getting really, really involved. So... I'm going to close these all down and reload them uh, one at a time again because it's going to get too complicated to keep track of what we've got here, why we need them. So I'm just going to go back. Right back to the XORG libraries and I'm going to go through starting with the first well, I'll load these two up because I know I definitely want these. And we'll see how else we get on. Yeah, that's got some options there. Um, D login D was where we were getting involved with some of the dependencies, wasn't it? I remember now. So. 
So a login date. Let's look at the requirement day bus first of all. Right, so we've got to rebuild DBus because of this as circular dependency. And for tests we've got dependencies as well. Um, so what it says about the tests. Right, it says the DBus test cannot be run until after GLib, DBus GLib has been installed. It must be run as an unprivileged user from a local session with bus address. To run the standard test issue, make check. But if you want to run the unit aggression check tests, configure requires additional parameters which expose functionality in the binaries that are not intended to be used in production build of DBus. So um, that's the bit I'm going to ignore, I think. Um, I'll run the make check, but not these ones, if it's going to alter the binaries in such a way that you can't use them in case um, you actually want to use this uh, as a day-to-day -day, uh, system. So we need dbus glib from that, and I guess we don't need anything else uh, for the testing, because it's got Python here. Uh, I'm guessing that's what these other two Python modules are for. So we just need to install dbus glib for that. So that needs D dbus, funnily enough, uh, which is kind of ironic. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. Dbus test cannot be run until after Dbus. And that needs Dbus itself. So it looks like we'll have to build Dbus, um, install it, then install Dbus glib, then go back to Dbus and run the tests. Right, so let's get glib now. Julep has got libxslt. Again, we're going around in circles a little bit here. And PCRE. Um, optional looks mostly to do with testing. Some are off the book. Um, yeah, there's lots of interdependencies here. I'm wondering if the thing to do is to get some of these smaller libraries installed, like for example PCRE. I think they'll complicate things less. Um, Libgcrypt, yeah. Yeah, let's do PCRE first of all. I think um, things to do with this, it looks like it's so complicated. I'm um, going to have to just nibble away at the odd package here and there and see what's left and then just take a plunge with one of these packages to break the um, circular dependencies, uh, unfortunately. So I'm going to start with PCRE, which is chapter 9. In general libraries, PCR. Yes, yeah, so we've got PCRE two installed, but this is PCRE, the um, like the older version. 
So what I need to do is to go to my terminal and go to the home. Look for PCRE. Oh, what have I done? Right, I did control F there as if I was in a normal browser. Um, right, how do I come out of this? Looks like I'm editing it in part in via, so I'll just quit that. Yeah, press the left arrow to search in links. You need to do a forward slash, and then I can type in PCRE 8, and there it is. So there wasn't any dependencies for this. Um, there may be some additional options to add in there. I think Enable JIT is one of them. So I'm going to download it first. Save to disk. I'll extract that now. Make sure I get the right one. It's PCRE 8.45. Go back and I'll copy this and just check the other options. So it's PCRE, so enable Unicode properties. Got that PCRE 1632 and PCRE grep libz and bz2. So 1632 BZ and BZ2. PCRE test library line and disable static. We've got that. So yes, it's just the enable JIT option, which I'll add in. So there's a confirmation, it's actually scrolled off the screen, I can't scroll back, but you can see that JIT option has actually been enabled there, and up there as well, enable JIT compiling support, so that looks like that's accepted. Let's go back up again, so we need to build this with make, let's run that. So that's built and run make check now to test it. Yes, that's a pass. And run make install as the root user. As the root user. And just check there's no more commands to run. No, there isn't. So let's tidy up. Okay, I'll cross that off my list, go back again, 
Now, um, I've just been thinking while that was compiling. I think I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. Um, I tend to do a lot of the dependencies as early as I can to save rebuilding packages, but um, it, it can be prone to errors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try this time to install the bare minimum and just rebuild anything that I have to rebuild. So that means, for example, with these two that are required and recommended, um, well, for start off with the XOR libraries, I think I've already put down that I want to re rebuild that to get the documentation because that's always useful to have. Um, if I go into font config, it requires free type. Um, looks like these this is for documentation as well so uh, against font config which is chapter 10 I'm going to put reload after after um, optional so it means I'm going to have lots of packages where I'm going to repeat the installation but um, it should mean that I'll get to the, hopefully, it means that I'll get to the graphical environment a lot sooner than I would do otherwise. Um, it'll also be easy for me to show you what I'm doing, how I'm building this, I think, because I keep coming back to this uh, graphical browser to, to show you um, like the hierarchy and dependencies to make it simple to see rather than uh, using the text browser, which is would be a lot harder to use. Um, free type we've already got installed anyway, so and free type is a requirement for half buzz. Um, so and also probably yeah, there's a couple of others there like libpng and which which aren't installed yet. I'm not sure what Brotly is for. I can check that out at the time. Um, so yeah, free type, I'm sure that's installed, but I'll check. Uh, yeah, free type is there. Um, if you are in any doubt, another way to find out is to um, go back to the prompt and the browser. It is under the package, you're not sure if it's installed, just look for some of the, for example, the either the binaries or the libraries that have been installed and just look for them. So that one, oops, that one's got a binary called free type config. So if I type in free type, you can see it's there on the system. So I know that that package has definitely been installed. Um, so I don't need to reinstall that. So I'll just, I can get away with, looks like I can get away with just building font config there. Now, doing what I'm doing could mean that I build package the packages and leave off something that I think is okay as being, you know, left out at this point, and it might affect how X window starts, or it might not start at all, or it might affect something. So it's a bit of a risk, but I'm going to try it and see what happens. Um, this one, eLogin D. Well, I'm going to. I've got lib. Uh, Linux PAM pull kit is needed at runtime or recommended at runtime. Dbus is required. Let's see what that's got. Oh, this is circular dependencies. So again, it's going to be a rebuild for Dbus in chapter 12 when the dependencies are installed. So I'll put after. X windows and the optional for the testing and that should allow eLogin D to be built and again eLogin D will be a rebuild after the um, recommended packages are installed so that you can see straight away I've cut down by, by limiting myself, I've cut down 
the dependencies apart from this PCRE which I've installed which wasn't actually needed now now I've decided to do this slightly differently um, I've cut it down the dependencies for XORG libraries to, to just three packages and I'm hoping that will be sufficient to allow the libraries to build it may be that the libraries fail at one point and it could be that one of these packages is, is actually required uh, but we'll have to deal with that if that happens unfortunately um, deal with it at the time okay so um, let's go to the first one you can see how using these tabs how easy it is to keep them up as a memo as to what you're going to build obviously in the text browser that's not not possible not that I know of I don't know if there is any sort of way that tabbing is simulated or any other method I could use but I'm certainly not aware of that Um, now dbus it says that um, it needs to be rebuilt after x live xorg libraries and e login e login d so what i'm going to do is to get e login d built obviously because that's what's uh, it's relying on dbus um, so yeah dbus then e login login d get config config yeah get my teeth in right font config built and then xorg libraries and then i'll come back to dbus to rebuild it because we'll have installed e login e login d and xorg libraries by that time and i don't think that'll cause any other problems because we're not using xorg at the moment so we won't be using e login d or the libraries apart from any requirements during building okay so Let's have a quick look at this. Um, I'll run the test to see what happens, but I can't. I don't expect they. There may be a small test coverage and they pass. That's okay. Um, it could be they run a bigger coverage but not pass because of certain uh, dependencies missing. So I'll keep this command explanations up here to look to, in case there's anything worth adding. Um, may not be because there's quite a few options there so it could be that just all those options that are explained right so back here we're looking for dbus now so forward slash type in dbus there it is there go into it download the package save it and I'm going to extract it now. Okay. So I'll copy these commands in. And then I'm going to get the web browser, overlay it to see what these options do. So we've got disable Doxygen Docs. We haven't got Doxygen installed and won't have, so we don't need that. Disable XML Docs. So we haven't got XML TO installed yet, but that will be something I'll probably want to install afterwards uh, when, when it's rebuilt. Um, this explains what the enable users session does. Stable installation of system D units on e login D based system. So this is an e login D based system because we haven't got system D. So we should see that there somewhere. Those two there. With console author, so we need that one system PID file, system socket, enable tests, do not use on a production build so we'll leave that out, enable embedded tests, do not use on a production build, enable asserts, and again should not be used on a production build so really there's nothing to change here until we rebuild and we want the extra documentation um, 
I'll be changing that to enable XML docs or removing it, depending on what, what the option is. Oh, it says remove the parameter. But we haven't got that installed, so I'll accept the default. Uh, looks like it's just make to build it. Okay, that's finished. Let's go back. Uh, if you're using a Desto install, which we're not. If you're still building your system in Troot or did not start the daemon yet. If you're using eLogindeed, create a sim link to the lib varlib dbus machine id file um, so we haven't got that yet but let's put this in now okay dbus test cannot be run until after dbus glib has been installed they must be run as an unprivileged user from the local session with bus address to run the standard tests Run make check. So it looks like we'll be running limited number of tests by using this command. Yeah, that was really quick, but there's no fate. In fact, there was nothing tested in this last bit, the looks of it. Um, oh, that's the summary. Yeah, it didn't look like anything was done, particularly. Um, this is the full tests. Didn't see the install there. Oh, I missed them. So we should have done that before the tests. Uh, as I say, it's quite easy to miss commands with this text browser. It's better than nothing though. So that's installed. So I've got that marked off to rebuild. I'm going to go back to my browser. I'll get rid of that for now. And we've got eLogin D next. So F5, I'm going to go back to the contents. eLogin D is actually the next package. So I'll just step down one. Um, download from there. Let's extract it now. Right, some kernel configuration needed here. So we need to check we've got these config options set. So let's see what's in the current, uh, let, now let's use the kernel we've got currently installed on the disk in case there's any other changes that have been made there. Unlikely this, this should match with the running system one. Um, so we can actually just do cat here. 
and we want to look for config C groups. So that's set, that's a good start. I notify user should be set. That's set, that's good. This POSIX ACL option should be set. That is. And some crypto options. Right, okay, that's a lot. So let's look for equals Y. Yep. Um, you'd expect that to be set because these options will probably rely on that being set to make them visible and or active. Crypto user, right, is not set, so we need to set that one. Um, keep pressing the wrong shift button there. And I guess that would mean that this option is not set either. No, it isn't. So that's something we've got to do now. Um, I'm going to type probably push D sources. Oh, I need to be root anyway, don't I? So I may as well just do that and go to sources Linux. Make menu config. And we go down to the crypto API part and look for the user, but I think it's down the bottom somewhere. Yeah, it's these bits here, I think. So what I can do here is to search for them by pressing forward slash again. I'll search. Now we know this bit was already set. This one wasn't. So I'll search for that one first. Paste that in. I just found that's not promising. Let's try again. Did press. Yeah, that's better. I did press a couple of buttons by accident there. So let's just check the name again. It's config crypto user. So it's the top one. And what you can do is a number here. You can press that number there, which is one. So there's the option there. You can check that it's the right option by going on help or pressing question mark. And you can see the symbol name appears there, config crypto user. Double check it. That's the one we want to set. So let's exit. Press yes or spacebar to um, change it. Now we want to look for the second one, which is user API hash. So again, forward slash, paste that in. There it is there, it's still set to no, so press 1 to go directly to it, and yes to select it. Or you could um, do M to make it a module. So that's it, that's those two changes. Just keep quitting, it, you have to go through all the previous searches you've done. And then we'll build this, now this might rebuild the whole kernel. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it does look like it's going to build quite a lot of it, so it's probably going to take five or ten minutes to do this bit.
Okay, so that's the kernel rebuilt, 13 minutes. So I need to mount, uh, no, I don't think I've got a separate mount on this machine actually. Check, no, okay. Um, and I seem to remember that my default boot was the one with dash two after it, so I don't know if I've still got that command or not, CP, VM, Arch. No, I haven't got it anymore, so I'm going to have to type this out again from full. So CP uh, Arch X86 underscore to boot VM dash two and CP system dot map to boot system dot map dash two cp dot config to boot config dash two um and I think that's it isn't it? That should be it. Should be and there. Have I created a file called CP? No, I haven't. Okay, that looks good. It's got today's date on it. So I won't reboot now. Um, I imagine, well, if anything needs the settings, they'll be examining the sources. Um, and we won't need this until we actually go into X Windows. Um, and I can't imagine that's going to be today. Um, there's still a lot more work to do. So that should be enough as it is. So we'll go back to the instructions. Yeah, we're ready to install eLogging D, so I just need to come out of this back to where we were and start running in the commands. So I don't think there's any other options. No. So I can just copy this all in in one go. Okay, that's built. So test results, 
test the results, sorry, ninja test. Okay, so there were a few failures there. Um, yeah, there's an encoding fail here again by the looks of it. I'm not sure why that is. Um, whether that's my selection of the character set, I don't know, or for some other reason. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the failures are for either. I mean, there are packages that maybe should be installed that aren't. Um, so it could be related to that. Um, but I think I'm going to have to go ahead with it as a moment as it is at the moment and just reinstall it after I've got those dependencies. Um, activated uh, or rather installed so I'm going to install this now that's complete there's no other file of oh, some configuration contains all possible options with their defaults compens commented out you may wish to disable killing user processes when the user logs out by running as a root user so that sounds like that could be quite useful possibly I guess it depends whether you will be running processes and logging off rather than turning off that you want to remain running um, but the problem is there you might have a um, if you do leave the machine running you you might have a utility or something that fails to shut down correctly and it'll just be stuck in the background so it's up to you whether you think that will be necessary to do it. I'm going to, actually going to put that in. Um, each user will need to register a user session using Linux Payment Login. The ETC PAMD session system session file needs to be modified and a new file needs to be created in order for the e-login need to work correctly. Run the following commands as the root user. So there's two config files here. I'm going to run them in separately. Um, oh, is there not? I'm not sure what that's happened there actually. Um, Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, no, it's this double chevron that's causing it to wait for more. So let's put the rest of it in then. That's better. So I can come out of this, go back and clean up. So, um, right, I've marked that off as a rebuild. Let's go to the browser, remove that tag tab, and then I need to look for comfort, font config now, um, and see if we can get that one installed. So, font config. Let's search for it again. Oh, looks like I need to go to the top. Let's try again. There it is there. So let's download this.
save it and extract it. Okay, so we've got a configuration file here. Disable docs. We'll disable avoids building the, the documentation that's in the configure. So I'll just copy this in as it is to build it. So that's built and we can test again these might fail because we haven't got um, a lot of the options installed although we've got the requirements in even that might may be incomplete it's possible but let's see what happens with this Well, that looks okay. So let's move on and install. That's completed install. If you did not remove the disable docs parameter from the configure command, you can install the pre generated documentation using the following commands. So let's do that. Um, as the root, yeah, there's lots of documentation there, and I think that is complete. There's some configuration information there. So that's something maybe to read if you want to add in fonts and so on. That's font config complete. Let's now go to the browser, close that tab down, and we should be okay, hopefully, um, to carry on with the XORG libraries.